Hi, everyone. So just to start, this, oh, can you see things? Can you see? Okay, okay great. Yeah. Um, I just want to start by saying that this presentation is my own. It's not Starcraft thoughts, just to be clear. It's me talking about, you know, what I see as depending on the ecosystem and what could be interesting to add the property for statement later, okay? So um, the theme of the, theme of the, of the, of the presentation is basically what's the bull case for Bitcoin versus ETH as a statement layer. So I just want to start with, uh, of, I mean, obvious, all of, obviously all of you know this, right? But uh, there is a paradox when you come to crypto, which is um, basically we've made systems that are like 15, 13 years old, and we are slower than 40 years old system, like Amy, Visa, MasterCard, and Europe, et cetera. And the reason is because we don't work in the same trust model. So regular banking works in the delegated accountability where you go through centralized entities, black boxes, and a set of black boxes, and you know you have to believe them. You have to trust them. When blockchain try a new type of trust assumption, which is what we call inclusive accountability, don't trust verify, where everyone in the network can verify all transactions. And to do so, you are sacrificing two properties right from out of the box, which is privacy and scalability. So the question is, how do you scale with inclusive accountability? So, you know, turns to that affair, I already said so. And the reason why it works well on central, like, you know, the, the, the existing infrastructure is because it's centralized. It can, they can use big machines and they can process very fast. When in crypto, in blockchain, what's happening is that you're limited by the weakest machine targeted by the network. So for Bitcoin, the weakest machine is the Raspberry Pi. For ETH, it is $2,500 $2, machine, roughly. And for Solana, it's a roughly $2,000 machine per month. I mean, Anatoly would fight me on this, but it's basically the lowest you can get, is, quoting his number, is $500 a month. And um, the, 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 this is just, you know, sort of uh, what we have seen. And now the question is, how do you scale? What, what do you do to scale? Sharding. It's all sharding. It's always been sharding. Anything we've been doing so far is sharding. Rollups, um, lightning, and um, uh, even the form original plan for Ethereum was sharding. The question, the difference is what do we trust, where, how the sharding is made. And so there is kind of um, two flavor of, I mean, three flavor of sharding. I'm just going to go over the two first one which is the consensus base, where there is all the shard and there is no hierarchy between shards, which is like kind of the original design of ETH 2.0. You have like in shard sharding and you are kind of as, as secure as your least secure shard with this random selection of validators. And it is a very big complicated system where you need to trust them, trust the, the, that the algorithm, the randomness works. The other type is, um, you know, economic base. Uh, I will uh, have Ed here with, uh, I'm going to apologize for the, the optimistic for the fall in between the next one and the, what I'm going to say. I'm just going to put the question mark here. Uh, where basically you have uh, opt-in sharding, uh, infinite scale for, for the context of lightning and plasma, uh, capital inefficiency also for lightning and plasma, and unrealistic trust assumption um, also, I mean, un unrealistic either trust assumption in the context of plasma and lightning, uh, which is basically uh, being on uh, up, up all the time, and unrealistic timeout uh, for the context of optimistic rollup. Uh, proof base, which is also why rollup doesn't fit it perfectly, because it should be, optimistic rollup should be in between, like a, a mix of those, where you get uh, an opt-in sharding, like, you know, you can choose to believe that shard or not. You have this fractal scaling, that's more on the proof side of things. Uh, you have capital efficiency, also for optimistic rollup. And you have an optimal trust assumption, uh, at least uh, for both rollups that we are talking about, and you get instant finality more on the proof system, on the validity proof system. So, but that's um, the 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 what I was going for is that you kind of get. So, as I said, roll up, optimistic rollup should be somewhere. I didn't want to you know make too much separation in classification. But when you look precisely at the assumption here, the ultimate form of sharding is basically validity rollups. Very simple why, because they are providing you uh, with instant finality without putting all the trust at the consensus, at the technological, uh, technological layer. When the other one are either on the crypto economics or on the pure economics of the way the system works. So now the question I'm asking is, what do you need from L1 to be a good validity rollup, so for a good settlement layer for rollups? So you kind of want three things when it comes to an L1. You want 
fast to sync, verifiable, and decentralized. But, you know, like it's a kind of the simple thing, right? And kind of if you think about this, the ultimate L1 to ever exist would be a, Z, a recursive ZK L1. You know, one proof, they have verified the entire history of the chain, and all of a sudden you, are, you know that everything you have been done before is trustworthy. Uh, so MENA for that purpose is, you know, optimal. It's succinct, it can be verified on phone. But there, there is kind of my perspective, and maybe I'm wrong, and this is why I'm saying this, all of this is my analysis, not Starkware, uh, is MENA, like all of the newer projects, and I'm gonna come to this, like credible neutrality. So I know if everyone knows what credible neutrality is, but I'm going to go over this. So credible neutrality, so this is coming from a paper by Vitalik from Nakamoto.com. Um, the, 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 the TLDR is, it's a, mecha a mechanism is credibly neutral if, if I'm looking at the design, it doesn't discriminate between people. And so sort of precept also written by Vitalik is don't write specific people or specific outcome into the mechanism. So basically, don't pre-mine, per se. Uh, open source and publicly verifiable, fine. Keep it simple, and don't change it too often. So if you take that definition, you are looking at the initial token distribution of any L1, or any newer project that came out in the last five years. And it's very skewed, it's very skewed. It's very skewed for the entirety of the, 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 the chain timeline, lifetime. And so the problem is that when you, all of them are you know, proof, of work, proof of stake, most of them, right? And so it means that because they get such an unfair advantage first, it, they will always sort of participating in the protocol and will always keep that unfair advantage over time. And this is why my claim is, and I'm not the only one to make that claim, is that initial token distribution is the hardest thing to get right. And so, basically, by the way, this is also why StarkNet and Starkware didn't take that L1 route, because we can't get it right. You can, and then you can no longer make this token distribution right. Just a second. So then what L1? So there are basically two L1 that I found credible, somewhat credible. Bitcoin, obviously, is the most credible one. There was no pre-mine, no game, and equal access, meaning everyone that showed up, who cared, who looked, could have participated. And because no one cared, distribution is the, big, is the widest. Also, open source from day one, verifies to verify. System is, the system is super simple across the board and almost hardened at this point. Almost thing won't change. I mean, obviously, I don't want to overplay the ICO, on-game ICO. It's true that if, the reason why it's, if it's still credibly neutral is because when they did this ICO, no one cared still. People then their, did their 10x, are very happy, they sold it, and the token got distributed. And while it started at, you know, something very centralized, you can argue now that it became truly decentralized. It was it's open source and publicly verifiable execution. So this is already questionable. I mean, open source for sure, but the publicly verifiable on, you know, we are requiring machines that takes, you know, more and more time. The, the, the state growth makes it, we don't know, we don't, we, barely, we don't really have a machine today on if, if you ask the core dev, what is the target machine? They all have a different answer. Look, the, the, this number I gave you is just like sort of average of what I managed to gather, but there is no true answer for that, answer, for that question. We don't know. On, the res on Bitcoin, they will all tell you Raspberry Pi. It's a Raspberry Pi. And keep it simple. I mean, you've been following if 2.0 for a while, right? Uh, uh, let's say simplicity is not, our, is not a strong uh, suit. Uh, we bring like random new ideas and we bring, you know, make, make very sometimes old choices, and we go back and back and forth when, for instance, the proof of stake. Why don't we have taken half the shell algorithm? Why are we going for Casper when Tendermint works? When hot stuff have been, you know, peer very, peer, you know, made by academics, peer reviewed, went to all the circus of academia. Why are we making our own consensus? I don't know, I find it hard to explain. And the don't change too often is like, I mean, you know. 
<laughs> I'm not going to even argue this. Like they, we have been coming up with VIPs and new VIPs every, like there is oh, today 5,000 VIPs, I think Bitcoin has 300. And we're not talking, even talking changes, of course. I'm talking just, you know, current, just uh, the don't change too often. At this point, I don't think there is a, a single document that can tell, tell you from the get-go how to build a, like, a client on ETH. And I have like a friend of mine, Thomas here, who, never mind, we can talk, testify. I'm assuming that building a client is basically reading the other people's code. <laughs> yeah, but the low paper is, has it updated? When was the last time it was updated? Two weeks ago. Andrew updated. Aragon from Aragon updates it now. Yeah, Iperbaz is maintaining it, yeah. but he says that it's quite. We also, have next, we also have an executable Python spec for the yellow paper like, in development. Okay, yeah, but now, okay, because now we're kind of making it happen, right? But for a long time, was it updated? No. Okay. Andrew. Yeah, someone basically said, okay, fuck, we stop that, that nonsense. And I'm taking care of myself for myself. And so today wins, if today wins, because it's very simple, it works. I mean, just as simple as that, like it works. My point is, I'm trying to make is that don't let's not sit and assume that Bitcoin are just dumb and not gonna do anything. And so as I say, neutral credible neutrality, neutral, neutral credibility, uh, credible neutrality, I'm sorry, by that. Bitcoin wins. And you know, I was in Miami two weeks ago. And you have the level of, of sort of passion, the cult that you see there, is something you will never see anywhere in, in ETH. This like this, and there is the, the it's it's maybe madness, but they live and breathe Bitcoin. I don't I don't I'm not like that, but I could. I'm saying that when you have uh, you know so radical people in front of you, there is something to pay attention. It's not just you know they are not just dumb. All of them. I mean, some are, not all of them. But well, let's go back to the tech side now, and what I'm talking about L2s. So, what I, my, my, my take, and this is where I'm going for, is that um, Bitcoin is surprisingly well suited for that, for for L2s, for rollups. And the first one is, it's extremely simple, extremely simple. And I've, you know, I was talking about Mina being this recursive proof, right? Bitcoin could actually make it happen outside of the consensus. If you were to implement a, a Bitcoin node in, let's say, Cairo, of course, uh, I'm from Starkware, you know, don't, don't like, I mean, come where I'm, I'm telling you where I'm coming from, right? Uh, you could have a succinct sync of Bitcoin verifiable on your phone and instantly download the, six, uh, the, the 13 years of Bitcoin and, ver and have it running on your phone. This is not something you can even imagine happening on ETH by, by, by margin. We will never have if clients like that sync the entire chain with, uh, not cha without changing the trust assumption, of course, uh, on, on on the phone. Bitcoin can do that. The second thing is that the UTXO model is actually surprisingly suited for rollup, for zk rollup, even for rollup in general, for IBC, for rollup, all that. It's surprisingly suited. Why? Because rollups do not need compatibility. It only to needs to maintain state. It only cares about what the current state, what the next state. And if tomorrow, you know, uh, Bitcoin was to adopt something, uh, let's say a stock verifier or something else, then you could just make that transition. And now all of a sudden you have like a system that just do state transition. That's enough for rollup. Uh, and the last bit is there is an appetite for enshrine rollup in Bitcoin. They are looking at what we're doing, obviously, and they start to get more and more traction around the usage of Starks, specifically. Why? Because Starks has a lot of cool properties when it comes to, to Bitcoin, per se. First of all, it has better cryptography than elliptical cryptography, in general, um, more secure from the post-quantum security. And so adding Stark opcode would not only enable rollups, but would enable post-quantum secure signatures, would make enable Turing complete spending condition, and with the uh, um, addition of something called Covenant, Covenant is basically this notion that uh, when you spend an ETXO, it can define the next ETXO. So basically, with con Covenant, you maintain state. With Covenant, which actually will happen, or most likely will happen, because there is this opcode called uh, check template verify, pushed push by Jeremy Rubin, which implement the first form of uh, Covenant, they change their mind. They're going to have it. 
And with Covenant, you actually have L2s, you actually have Animus Pool, you have everything that Bitcoin cares about when it comes to, uh, to um, making the, making like a, Bitcoin, basically make, making Bitcoin the, the, the core uh, layer. Okay, so this is what I'm saying is that it's not just a fantasy. I'm just bringing up like a bunch of, you know, names. I mean, I'm obviously going to use Peter claim that we are never simplifying if, uh, at the first one, you know, of course. Let's play my card. Uh, Rose Beef here, I don't know if you know him, but he's the lead there for um, um, Lightning, um, Lightning the company, which is one of the three clients of Lightning on, on Bitcoin, which basically saying, I'm looking very closely at Caro because this could basically save, uh, solve a lot of things with Bitcoin. Um, Paulina saying, you know, th that um, roughly the same thing. Uh, and actually we are, you know, sponsoring research to see what Starks could bring to Bitcoin because it's cool. It's fucking cool. Just Bitcoin is cool. Like I don't think anyone here say Bitcoin as a tech is not interesting. So uh, my take from this, and I'm trying to say is we should try to target simplicity. We should stop coming up with new construct and try to make it easier to verify if enshrining L1, making it succinct, making it simple, please. So that's my last comment. Uh, I hope I'm, you know, I'm controversial enough and happy to answer questions. <laughs> yes, Francesco. Yeah, you, you mentioned a few things which are actually doable on Bitcoin, but what about data availability? Because that doesn't really seem okay. to be doable on Bitcoin. I have a question. I mean, my take, data availability should not be on L1. Why do I care about what happened on L4 King 4 with this random game? Let me choose. It's such opt-in sharding. Let me choose my shard. Let me choose my Celestia. Let me choose another chain. Why do I need to make everyone use the same chain? That doesn't make sense to me. Oh, That's my personal take. Well, you don't get the same kind of trust assumptions. Like if you then 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 go. So you don't use it. Just use L1. Well, so the, what do you mean? Uh, well, I mean that, like what I mean is. I mean, you of course can put a roll-up data on roll-up if you on L1 if you want. That's fine too. But my point is that this idea that we need necessarily to like keep like trust assumption. I mean, I don't say that. The trust assumption change, but it's an opt-in change. If you really care about you know running on L1, then just run on L1. Well, the, the issue is like if you let's say you put your data on Celestia, just to yeah. make it simple, everyone can understand that. Uh, you're not trusting the social consensus of Celestia, which you might be willing to trust. Like, if you trust, you know, Ethereum and Celestia, you might be okay with that. But you're trusting the validator set of Celestia, which is a completely different thing. Like, an attack on the validator set of Celestia can break your right. your trust assumptions, and I think that's very different than trusting just in, you know, in the case of one chain where you have both data availability and settlement, the two things are coupled. So you know that if something becomes unavailable. Uh, that whole chain is invalid. There's no way to, there, there's no way for some validator set to trick you into thinking that it is. I'm going to answer it this way. I don't believe. I think that you, we, I'm, anyone in this planet will find the right, you know, validator set that he believes. But if you don't, sorry, I just destroy stuff around me. If you don't believe it, then I don't prevent you from using Bitcoin as a as a data availability layer. And by the way, they're thinking about it. But how? Like, I mean, you you can use up, uh, you can use uh, uh, up return, just so the data there. And then prove inclusion using the star, the, the Stark sync, the succinct sync that the data was there, and prove it off chain. So I can put the data on the up return. Do you agree with me? I, I don't know much about Bitcoin. I don't really. So okay, up return is like this. Uh, so the actually was a very big debate in Bitcoin for a long time. Up return is this up code that returns. Um, uh, you can put whatever you want afterwards, mm -hmm. and it's basically removed from the UTXO set, still store in history. Okay, mm -hmm. so this is where you are supposed to put data if you want to store the data, mm -hmm. some data. Let's say you want, I want to prove that them exist. But is this storage forever? Or uh, so it's it's storage like history, like the same way we believe that history will remain. Ricky Rollup is basically making the same assumption that history will remain. I mean the the rog, I mean the actually four 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 is making that assumption too. Like if the data is available once, it will be available forever. I mean, that's fair, but also it's not just uh, historical storage that is a problem, it's also bandwidth. Like you, that's the whole point of data sharding, that you can shard the bandwidth that's necessary, but you can't do that. I mean, how do you do that on Bitcoin? 
like you would need some kind of data availability sampling or something like that. And how do you do no, that? No, I mean, I mean, you, you, you don't need a, why would you need data availability sampling? You can just uh, prove inclusion of the data. If I push data on chain, I don't need the same thing. Yeah, but the, I mean, the, how much data can you put on Bitcoin and expect, you know, it, it, it doesn't really have scale. Like how you get scale. I mean, scale but that's the thing. I mean, all the data and my, my question to you, and that's my reverse question to you is like, why if care about data? If care about consensus, we agree, let me choose the, the, the let's eat, choose, let me choose my own poison. We are making more complex stuff to, rem to keep very nice trust assumption but we're basically changing the trust assumption by making it more complex. I'm making the hardware different than what I'm changing the trust assumption. I don't, I'm not sure I understand. Like, Do you agree with me that bringing six, you know, the 60 shard, whatever, is changing requirement on the hardware to some extent? Um, maybe, but I, that's, there's lots of ways that we can mitigate that if, if not. Yeah, I mean, like go below the hardware that we have today. It's no, but okay. But my point that today we have a specific hardware, right? Yeah. If we make the system do more, most likely we're going to change the hardware, right? To some extent. Yeah, it could. Yeah. So we're changing the trust assumption. We're changing the target of the machine or network. Yeah, that's that's fair. So I mean, we, it's an agree, it, we can agree on the consensus. I think my personal take here is that we should keep it simple. Just keep it simple. Why do I need to store? I mean, why do I care? as I play World of Warcraft, decentralized World of Warcraft on layer four, of the data, that, that it, like, if this guy plays this data on, on layer four, I don't care. I, mean, I just don't care. If you play World of Warcraft, I don't think anyone would care. And like, I'm sure you're willing to trust like any validator said, but if you're... No, but you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I'm not playing World of Warcraft. Why do I care about your data about this NFT? I don't care about your NFT. Why do I care about you, sto uh, me storing your data? But if you, you know, if you have all your money on a roll-up, you probably care that it cannot be taken away by the validator side of a different chart. Uh, okay, fair enough. But I'm saying this is an opt-in chart. That's the main difference between the if 2.0 original plan. The main difference with if 2.0 original plan is that all roll-up existing today, they are, are opt-in charts. They are charts I believe or not. I can ping ch ch join or not. That's my problem. Well, uh, you, you can. It's opt-in, but... It, it's the only solution we have for scale, so it's not really opt-in. Like, if you want to be global, people have to use them. It's not like they can use them or not. Like, no. Ethereum is too expensive, and everything will be too expensive. Like, there won't be another solution that will be cheap enough for everyone to use. But my answer is, I mean, I understand. My, my answer is that we are trading off complexity for keeping some trust assumption on data, which means that we will not be able to verify the network, the, the full verification on my phone. That's my problem. My problem is this. This is my problem. I, for me, L1 should be verifiable on the phone. That's what I care about. Should I care about the data being aware somewhere? Like, I don't. Just one last thing. I think the, the goal, you know, it might be five, ten years down the line, who knows, but it is that things should be verifiable on the phone. I don't think that data availability sampling or what we're trying to do, like putting data on it here, is counter to that. It's just. It's going to take time to do it, but there are. Ideas but I, on how I mean, show me. I mean, I, I would love to be proven wrong. By the way, this is just as I said, start. It's my text. I, I you know, I. I also, this is. Yeah. No, no, right, right, right. I'm just bringing it up because I don't want people to think that it's different. It's just my text. Uh, regardless, your what you're saying is true, but um, I don't see the plan. I mean, I see how Bitcoin can do it. I don't see how my phone will be able to store 100 terabyte or uh, 100 gigabyte or a terabyte of data <coughs> every year. And even if it's going to remove it, even with 4444, we still need that data to be stored. If we assume that the phone will be a full node. No, you don't. I mean, you, you don't need, well, you want it to be full node for a roll-up or for Ethereum? It's for Ethereum. Ethereum. I mean, I want it to be, I want it to be, I want my phone to be able to validate the chain. That's what I want. For Ethereum, you won't need to store terabytes of data. Like you, you do the little sampling. After a bit, you forget the data, and you can even expire. It. Okay, but you are basically outputting the problem to sort of saying this is outsourcing the problem. You're saying someone else will take care of it. No, it's just that if you, let's say you, you know your uh, your uh, your all your money is on Starkware, right? And it's a roll up on Ethereum, maybe. Right. Uh, it is. 
<laughs> well, it's okay, this is my text. <laughs> this is not the change the song we're producing. It's just me being controversial and being upset at uh, uh, the fact that we're not simplifying. If I can verify Ethereum, and, and I know that data is available, and I can verify your proofs, your ZK proofs, I know everything is fine on Starcraft. I know my mind is fine. Right. I'm verifying everything. I no, don't need to trust anyone. Like, I, I can run essentially... I mean, I don't know. I cannot buy but, myself, like... Okay. Do you agree with me that the phone we're very unlikely to be able to verify blocks. Uh, which blocks? I mean, the tip of the chain. Uh, like starker blocks? No, 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 you're, you're the if, if blocks, like running execution. No, I don't think that's, yeah, you can have the... <laughs> I mean, we have enough time, to you need to be connected every certain second to access the block. Like you, the same time is what, 10x, uh, for every block creation, there is an, an 100, 100 blocks being verified? Something like this? Something like that. Wow, so it means that, like, the, let's say I was off of my, of my phone, of my wallet for a month, for whatever reason, how long would it take to me to sync, in, sync back to the tip? I, 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 need to, I don't know the computation, but it would take some, some time. My claim that you can, on Bitcoin, it would just take, it would be instant. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, for one thing, even though you said it's, it's not uh, realistic, but I, I don't know, depending on the horizon that you look at, we might also have uh, basically ZK proven uh, I want. Like, why is that out of the picture? Because my point is that, that's my point what I was trying to make. I, I need to drop because I have a presentation on the other side of the city in like 25 minutes. Uh, so my point is, just to summarize this, is that the only two credible chain that we will ever have, because everything that will come out from now will be gamed, is Bitcoin and ETH. Bitcoin and ETH are the only two chains that will ever be necessarily credible where the wealth creation, if this L1s are going to be the, the reference L1 would become the sort of the, the biggest wealth creation of all time, the only way to not have it skewed to like a group of 100 people is either ETH or Bitcoin. And what I'm saying is that by making ETH more and more complex, we will not get to a point where I can verify on my phone. Bitcoin can. That's the whole sort of what I'm trying to say. And yeah, I need to go. I need to go. Anyway, any qu more question? Please ping me afterwards. <laughs> Thank you very much for these hot takes. And there was a fun little debate going on. Maybe we will see proof of stake, proof of work Ethereum actually continue. Someone will be interested in running it. <laughs>